Welcome to the trippy world of magic mushrooms. I chose to do psychedelic mushrooms because they contain organic compounds. I am also interested in this compound's ability to mimic a certain neurotransmitter and how it affects one's body. Who saw it first? What are magic mushrooms? Magic mushrooms refers to a particular compound found in specific mushroom species that induces an altered state of consciousness and causes unreal perceptions of the surroundings. Pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures used hallucinogenic substances in magical, therapeutic, and religious rituals. The purpose of using these substances was to enter a trance and achieve greater enlightenment and open-mindedness. Examples of art by the Mesoamericans depicting this magical mushroom are shown here. Who discovered its true identity? While traversing through Mexico, Wasan and his wife researched the religious use of mushrooms by native people. This was the first place he ever participated in a religious session. He collected several species of psilocybe mushrooms and sent samples of these mushrooms to Albert Hoffman, who was able to isolate and identify the compounds psilocybin and psilocin. A man named Terence McKenna took research on this psychedelic one step further after its discovery. In a book he wrote, he mentions that psilocybin caused the ancient brain to expand in its information processing abilities, stating that early humans ate their way to consciousness. McKenna argued that the gradual advancements in language, technologies, culture, and spirituality are due to the ingestion of psilocybin as well. What is psilocybin and psilocin? Psilocybin is a tryptamine compound with a chemical structure containing an indole ring linked to an ethylamine substituent. It is chemically related to the amino acid tryptophan and is structurally similar to the neurotransmitter serotonin. Psilocybin is an alkaloid that is soluble in water, methanol, and ethanol, but insoluble in organic solvents. Psilocin can be obtained by dephosphorylation of natural psilocybin under strongly acidic or alkaline conditions. Psilocin is relatively unstable in solution due to its phenolic hydroxy group. How are psilocybin and psilocin isolated? When Hoffman first got his hands on the sample, he tested its effects in animals first, but it had no effect. So Hoffman and his colleagues set themselves in a safe environment and tested the effects on themselves. They used various solvents and fractionating procedures to isolate the active principles. Fractionation is a specific separation process where a certain quantity of a mixture is divided into a number of smaller quantities. The photo on the right displays a possible setup. Though this process, he had several milligrams of concentrated material that didn't have a clear shape. He used those samples to make a paper chromatogram pictured here. Hoffman and his colleagues ingested those four fractions. One of those samples turned out to be active, which they then did more tests on, crystallized it, and got the color reaction specific for it, and isolated the active principles. Serotonin versus psilocybin, psilocin. Serotonin, a hormone responsible for mood, feelings of well-being, and happiness. Psilocybin itself is not thought to be very psychoactive, but soon after it is ingested, it is metabolized into a substance called psilocin, which is highly psychoactive. The acidic environment in the stomach is a favorable environment for the rapid dephosphorylation of psilocybin. Enzymes such as alkaline phosphatase and other nonspecific esterases dephosphorylate psilocybin in the intestines, kidneys, and the blood. Without the phosphate group, psilocin becomes more lipid soluble than psilocybin, making it me metabolically available in the body and more easily absorbed in the intestines. At this point, psilocin is distributed all over the body via the bloodstream. Being lipid soluble allows psilocin to cross the blood brain barrier and elicit its effects. It is thought that psilocin's activity at a subtype of serotonin receptor known as the 5-HT2A receptor is critical to the drug's psychedelic effects. Summarized are three mechanisms which are known to work or may work in the brain. Hallucinogens may disrupt normal serotonin pathways in the brain in several ways. 
One way may be by binding to presynaptic 5-HT1A receptors, which would alter the serotonergic output to the rest of the brain. When hallucinogens bind with postsynaptic 5-HT2A receptors in cortical neurons, this changes cellular signaling and functioning via the excitatory amino acid glutamine. Hallucinogens disrupt sensory input by binding with reticular postsynaptic 5-HT2A receptors. The binding causes another cascade of events altering the sensory information received by the cortex. Why is this relevant? Is it beneficial? A study conducted by Beckley Imperial Research Program provided the first clinical evidence for the efficacy of psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy to treat depression. They used 20 patients with moderate to severe depression. They administered two doses seven days apart. All patients showed some reductions in their depression scores at one week post-treatment and maximal effects were seen at five weeks with results remaining positive at three and six months. There were no placebos given and it was a small test group, but it still confirms that psilocybin is safe to give to depressed patients. They also did MRIs on the patients before and after treatment. The scans showed that psilocybin may effectively reset the activity of key brain circuits known to play a role in depression. From another article, studies have also been done to show the effects psilocybin has on suicide, anxiety, OCD, alcohol dependence, and tobacco cessation. These studies all show potentially positive benefits with minimal safety concerns for psilocybin use. Its relevancy to today's generation, it is moving towards legalization. It is now decriminalized in a few cities and Oregon and legal in a few countries. People today still use it for spiritual connection and out-of-body experiences, as well as treatment for end-of-life and mental health. Chem 131 helped me understand the structure of both of these compounds, how it plays a role in altering the brain, and a better understanding of biochemical processes and pathways. Here are my sources.